Hi, everyone, and welcome to Creator Profile, How to Be an Artist with Kathleen Nardi today. You guys know me, hopefully by now. My name is Carrie Brummer, and you guys are in the Facebook group Becoming Artist Strong. This is a new series where we showcase different artists in the community because I think the question, how to be an artist, has a very varied answer. And I want you guys to see the very many different ways people can be creative and express their artistry in their lives. Um, I'm really happy to introduce you to Kathleen today. Feel free to say hi in the comments. Hi. Um, Kathleen is primarily a textile artist, though she does work in many media. And she makes these beautiful, colorful things called quillows, one of which you can actually see behind her on the wall. And she'll tell you more about them. And she has a brand called Quilloha, which she's going to to share with us today. So thank you, Kathleen, for being here and joining us. Will you please say hi and tell us a little bit about your work? Absolutely. Aloha from Maui, Carrie. I am so happy to be here. Um, a little bit about my work, as you can see, um, this is what uh, Carrie was talking about. This is what we call a quillow. It is a quilt and it actually folds into the pocket so it becomes a pillow. I usually work with four different fabrics, the top and the bottom, and it just has been so amazing to work with fabric. Um, I guess I've always considered myself to be creative but when I found fabric it just opened this whole this whole thing for me I can't even explain it but I found my calling and I'm like a kid in the candy store when I walk into a fabric store and I'm like oh my god you know <laughs> give it to me all and so I'm just happy to be here today and share um, my work with you yeah, that's great. So um, I'd actually love to know, I actually don't know that I know this answer. Um, when did you first realize the importance of art in your life? So everything goes back to my grandmother. My grandmother was, everything that she did was creative. And so I actually have show and tell. Um, when I was probably when I was eight or nine, maybe, maybe even younger, I don't even know, um, we would spend a lot of time together. And one of her favorite things to do was to do decoupage. Now decoupage takes many different um, flavors. The one that she did were these little miniature ornaments. Well, actually not, not all of them were miniature, but I have one here. She actually made this one. This is so beautiful. And if you can see the detail work in it. I mean, if you can imagine being eight years old and sitting there with tweezers and, you know, putting the different um, uh, rhinestones on and then their pins and this little gold foil, um, she was really the person who stoked my interest. And so I kind of never did studied art when in college it was like well in in grammar school you know i went to a parochial school and the nurse the nuns would hang something up on the wall and say copy this okay um and then in high school we had no art program and in college art was literally 800 people in a, a hall you know and i never did that either but I was always doing decoupage and I really, I collect tins and then I paint them and then put stuff on them, rhinestones or whatever. So I guess, you know, grandmothers are really important that way. And um, when my grandchildren come to visit me, they're like, what are we gonna make today? So it we instill it from a very young age. I love that you're even seeing it come full circle like that. Um, and we'll talk more about circles in a minute too. That's an important word, I think, for, for you and me both. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you've briefly told us what a quillo is. Can you tell us how you fell into this making of quillos and, and that journey? Everything happens for a reason, you know. So when we moved to Maui, um, the woman who lives next door, Yvonne, um, that's what she does. She's a, as avid a quillow maker as I am. And she said to me that she wanted to make a quillow for my husband and made this beautiful quillow. And um, when the family saw that, they, they were all like, we want one, we want one. And I went back to her and I said, so can I pay you to make them? And she said, nope. And I'm like, no. And she said, I can show you how to make them. And that was 
history. Thank you, Yvonne. Oh, that's so nice. I actually got a little bit of chills from there. It's so funny. It's almost like she knew she knew it was going to be an important path for you. Um, yeah, it was really special. So we uh, living next door, we, you know, if I get new fabric, I'll go running over and show her what I found or she'll say, oh, here's some fabric. So we, uh, yeah, we um, actually, um, we push each other, you know, mm -hmm. she does one thing, I do this and we learn from each other. So it's really fabulous. That's wonderful. There's so much value in having a peer who you can be excited about fabric colors with or your paint colors or the, the new art art idea you have and and not just sharing that excitement. I think that's kind of fuel for motivation, but then too, to have that, that, you know, not competition. I really don't like that word in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's, it's about, having someone who brings a mirror to you so you can really see what you want for your own art and and you you can't see that by yourself you really need people around you talking about and sharing your art with you to help you see that so I, that's so I true and we are it, the competition has nothing to do with it it's really um we have totally different styles and while we do make the same product it's a totally different thing so it's really amazing and and another example of how your voice can be expressed in art and all different kinds of media too. Um, so that's that's so nice. Mm -hmm. um, so for every 10 quillos that sell, you do something special. Can you tell us about that? I do. So um, when I moved to Hawaii, um, I needed a way to connect with other people. And I ended up connecting with a group of women, another circle, if you will. And we created um, an online um, presence called Creative Istio. And what we did was we worked on with teachers in the practice of creativity. We actually used the hashtag practice creativity. And um, part of what we did, anything we, we said, we are committed to giving back. It is so important to give back. And as a matter of fact, uh, Jonathan Fields talks about the elements of a conscious business. He talks about um, to serve a genuine need and to generate real profit, to serve as a true outlet for your strengths, values, voice, and potential, and to make a bigger dent in the universe. And that just spoke to me. And I said, you know, what can I do? And I thought, this is so perfect. So um, when I first started making quillows, before I started selling them, I was sending them to people who were either um, going through chemotherapy or had a loss or something like that. And the response that I got was so profound that I thought, this is the perfect thing to incorporate into quilloha, which is spreading aloha one quillo at a time. And so when um, on my website, um, and we'll actually share the link at the end of this, yeah actually send me the name of someone that you feel would benefit from Aquilo. And I have had, it is just such an amazing feeling for someone to, to, to get a box from Hawaii, not knowing what it is, having no idea, opening it up and getting this. And it's just like, it just, it, it makes the work that I do so worth it. And so for every 10 quillos, I give one away uh, based on recommendations from my community. And it's, it's really, um, I even have one person, Kelsey, who she's like a quilloholic, you know, I know. <laughs> she, when she bought her ninth quillo, she said, if I buy another one, will you give one away on my behalf? And I was like, that is what it's all about. That's so wonderful. Well, I can attest too. I I am very fortunate to have my own Quillo at home, mm -hmm. and um, sometimes I have to steal it from my husband. I have to say. <laughs> and then I was very fortunate. I got one for um, a friend of my mother's who who uh, was ill, and it totally brightened her day. So I can also attest to the the power of a Quillo. And I think there's something about not only the color choices and your conscious use of fabric, but also this idea of a blanket and it being like a hug and especially because of the size of it i think there's so much about it that's like about human empathy and contact and and affection um that i think brings a lot of comfort to people that's so nice yeah my husband coined it a maui medicine blanket 
that just sang to my heart. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's lovely. I love that too. And we will, we'll make sure that you guys have a link to her website so you can see. Um, I'm signed up to her email list and I actually know she's got a sale going on. So there are five quillows left in her store. So you should definitely take a peek. Um, and then she does have a link as well on her website, but we'll have that link as well um, in the video here okay. once I've published it so that you guys can also kind of um, uh, nominate someone for yeah. a quillow for um, after the 10. Um, so um, uh, let's see, how do I want to shift gears here? I think the first thing I'd like to talk to you about is how how we came together and how that Quillows and Quilloha and the Circle, my, my mastermind program kind of came together for you. you. You actually joined, I believe the first time as a scholarship student, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so can, can you tell us how you found out about the Circle and, and your journey inside that program? Absolutely. Well, um, I had spoken about the work that I had done, Creative Istio, and I met Christine, um, who was part of Art Artist Strong. And I really liked what she was doing. And I thought, what's this about? And so I joined Artist Strong. And interestingly enough, one of the first things that I did was you had like a public art, make art and put it in public. I'm like, that is so me. <laughs> that is so me. And so I did. I gave it away. And um, then I just kind of was, I don't know, a, a stalker in artist song. Because, <laughs> you know, when you work in fabric, um, drawing, um, art, you know, painting, you know, I, I'm not, you know, that, I, I, excuse me, at that time, I Good. was not that person, right? I'm like, yeah. I, I, I didn't even have a pencil in the house. I had to go out and get pencils. You should see my art supply now. It's like <laughs> over the top. When you offered the circle, people had been saying to me, Kathleen, you really should sell these. And I'm like, no, I'm not, you know, not there, not, you know, and I kept getting this nudge. And then you offered the opportunity for a scholarship for the circle. And I keep everything. And you have actually, part of the circle is to learn how to be a lot more organized. Um, I found my submission. And um, I'll, I, I apologize, uh, periodically I have to read. I can't remember all of it. <laughs> I said, my quillows are my art. It is the fabric and color combination that makes them one of a kind. I like working with fabric, not only because it's flexible, but it is a very practical art. I like working with textures. My short term goal is to set up a website to be able to sell my quillows. And since I'm so passionate about making them, I need to support my addiction. Right. So my long term goal is to learn different techniques that will enable me to embellish the quillows with appliques, mandalas and different design and to really expand my art. And that's what happened. Um, it was it was the support of the people inside the circle who encouraged me to go forward, who provided feedback when I was testing my website, you know, doing different things and helping with content. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to do it without the support. You know, I mean, I have friends, I have family, but the that feedback component on your art is so important in um, forcing you out of your comfort zone. And that's what I think the key is. In order to really explore your art, you have to get outside your comfort zone. And without a circle, it's very difficult. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it provides a safe space for you to be vulnerable and engage in hard conversations to help you reflect and really understand the whys behind your art. And I think that's so very valuable for every artist um, at, at whatever your goal is with art. I think that it's, you know, thinking about your why and, and understanding why you want to make the art and, and your aims for it can really help you be at peace with the decisions you make and the goals that you reach for as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So then um, the next year um, it came back and it said, well, you know, what are you going to do now and how will it change? And I thought, okay, I'm game. Let's see. I mean, the first year was a scholarship. So I was like, you know, I'm game. I'm in, I'm into this. And not to mention the friendships and the connections that were made. I mean, that will never go away. So um, what was interesting was, um, 
the next time I was trying to be focused about, you know, what it looks like. And I was able to figure out that there are four quadrants in my life. And those quadrants are my relationships, um, my health, yoga, and of course, Quiloha. And what the participation in the circle this time around has helped me is to have a focused awareness on everything that I do. I want to honor my creativity. I want to bring a sense of community um, to my life and to the people that I, I work with. And if there's something that's happening that doesn't fall into that area, it's really not part I don't have time for it. I mean, I work full time. I don't have time. So it really has to be that focused. And so as I was saying to you before we started, what the circle has en enabled me to do is to embrace my art and the art has become me. And that is the change is, I mean, that's who I am. Look, I got my colors on, right? I got my <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's been, I'm so grateful for you and for your choice to be in this community, Kathleen, and, and sharing that journey, because I think a lot of people initially sign up thinking, well, like, I'm going to build my website, and you might. But the, the program is about something much larger than building the website. It is about finding and really owning our choices and our art and, and feeling confident in those choices and embracing who we are as creatives and not feeling like we have to fit any other person's idea or box that they create on definitions of art or creativity or goals for art or creativity. So um, I think that's so very important. Um, that actually leads me to part of what I thought was so wonderful because and something I'd like you to share with the group too is, you know, you started off with this desire to serve and reach and build community, which is why you have one qu one quillow at a time, right? Spreading aloha, mm -hmm. um, and you have a donation opportunity, but you also still felt called to do more for community, and so you've created some another way for people to share quillows with people. Can you can you talk about that? Yeah, I'm still working on that component. I'm, I'm trying to figure out, and we, you and I have talked about how to grow that. Mm -hmm. um, but what had happened was it was actually for one of our own, one of our own circle members um, who was just having a tough year. And I came across this fabric. As a, matter of, as a matter of fact, Yvonne had a piece of fabric that had a horse on it and said, do you want it? And I'm like, I'll yes. figure out. <laughs> and I looked at it and as soon as I saw it, I'm like, I know what I'm going to do with it. And and then I was like, yeah, but you haven't sold 10 quillows. And I mean, you could just go deeply in debt and just give them stuff away. <laughs> and so I thought, you know, then the light bulb went on and I said, why don't I go to this circle and say, you know, would you be willing to give, donate anything that will help me pay for the fabric and the shipping? And so I put it together and it happened. And her response, Kirsten's response was so incredible. And it made me realize that this is really something that I could bring to other people. Mm -hmm. How many times have you found out that someone near and dear to you has, has cancer and you think, what can I do for them? I don't know what to say. Do I make a meal? I do send them a quillow and you don't have to do it. I mean, they're not cheap, but if there were several people who wanted to go together, it is truly a gift. I mean, everyone tells me, what am I doing right now? I'm laying on the couch covered in my quillow and I'm like, yes, that's what they're supposed to do. Um, so, but you know, we talked about the importance of circle and um, uh, Jean Bolin, um, she talks about this really powerful, um, we all believe as artists in, in uh, political activism of some form through our art. At least I do. We're, we're here to change the world. I mean, I'm just doing one at a time. But she talks about the importance of circles in how coming together in a circle is a very powerful, energetic source mm -hmm. and the more you work in a circle the more that you can get things done and let me tell you women in a circle get out of the way mm -hmm. because 
she believes actually that by forming more and more circles, we can move from a patriarchal society to one that is based on equality. And don't you really think that we need that now more than ever? Mm -hmm. So if we can, by creating our own circles, no matter what you do, create a circle that brings people together in community with shared values. It could be based on art, it could be based on cooking, it is such a powerful energy, and I really believe it's a change agent in our world. So, Amen. It's so important for artists in this community. I want you all to really hear that because so many of you, when you email me, you say things like, but can I just make art? Is that enough? And, and there's this underlying feeling of inadequacy like the art isn't going to do anything to really contribute or add to our communities and world and yet our art is a lens through which people see the world and the act and how we choose to give it and how we choose to share it um, things like creating this circle where people can contribute together and essentially crowdsource Aquilo for someone in need or someone who who's needing some extra love you know these are choices we can we can make with our art and and you have no idea how your art is going to touch someone. And if you never share it, you're stealing it from that person. Mm -hmm. And we need to really change that paradigm and really think about how powerful it is to really share from our heart when we make art that's truly ours and our voice and how that can have powerful kind of deep reaching roots that change things. Yeah, yeah, no. Amen, sister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I love I love how, you know, you started out with this desire to serve, but also, you know, you're honoring the fact that you also deserve to make money and there's nothing wrong with that. Why can't you also earn money from from the good you do? And, and in fact, that will help you spread more good. The more money you can earn from making your quillows, the more you can offer opportunities like this to people. And, and so there's this wonderful give and take that can happen, which is also part of a circle, right? There's, there's giving and receiving, and we need to be open to both as creatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know what? I think I think that's a wonderful place to um, kind of wrap things up. So I um, I want to tell everyone if you are watching this, we have one more question. But if you're watching this as a replay, either on YouTube or inside the Facebook group, feel free to comment. Um, Kathleen and I are going to be around to continue this conversation. If something in particular is really resonating with you, or if you have a question for Kathleen about her art, please comment and ask because that's also part of the reason we run these as a live activity. Is I want you guys to have this, you know, these are your women stand and men standing shoulder to shoulder who you can work alongside and see as community members who, who also see and get you as artists. Um, so thank you guys for being here and for listening to Kathleen and I. Um, and I want to end um, every, every conversation with this question. Um, what does it mean to you, Kathleen, to be an artist? Well, may not be able to do it, you know? Yeah. Let me try using other people's words. Um, Carolyn Manier is a French artist who I stumbled upon because I was looking at goddess art. Mm. And she talks about art being a symbolic, spontaneous construction that allows our unconscious mind to find a path to express oneself. It's a connection to the energy of the universe to construct in the present in connection with oneself and one's interior architecture. That's a Google translation, so I know it sounds much better in French. <laughs> What I had said, which obviously I was like, so what do you call it, Bear Klemp? I couldn't even say it. Um, but being an artist for me allows me to connect with my own personal creativity. It's what some may call a religious experience because through my art, I can practice my own dharma because I really truly hope to make the world a better place because of my art. But you know what? Pablo Picasso says it best. He said, the meaning of life is to find your gift. And the purpose of life is to give it away. Oh. 
Kathleen, thank you, thank you for being here. I am so grateful that I know you. And thank you everyone to watching. We are very happy to have you here today. Um, give Kathleen a shout and be sure to visit her website and go get yourself a Quillow before the holiday season because she doesn't have very many left. Yeah, there are five left. I want to sell all four and give the fifth one away. And I always cry. So I always <laughs> cry. It's just who I am. You know, That's, part of, that's <laughs> part of having and honoring how we feel as creatives and artists. And I wish more people would be honest and, and let themselves feel what they feel. So thank you for doing that. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you for having me. It has been a pleasure. And thank you for the work that you do in your circle. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Aloha.